Hey, John here. Let's talk about how the reset circuit works on the retro uh, Z80 CPU board, okay? This is my GitHub page for the project. You can click on the uh, PDF and open it up right here if you want. It turns out that this is difficult for me to zoom in and out of with the browser or whatever the version of this viewer is. Uh, it doesn't work as well as just opening this thing up with regular old KiCad. All right, so here's our design. This big chip right there is the Z80, okay? And you can see here's the reset, the clock, NMI, int, and so on. Uh, all the control buses over here. Here's the address lines and the data lines over here. These resistor networks around here are uh, little uh, parts that have eight resistors all in one package. So we can save a lot of PC board real estate. And in the diagram, that's these things here, right? So it's one big chunk. And inside of there, there's eight little resistors and they're all connected together on one end and they can connect them up to like five volts or whatever. And what we do with those is we use them as pull-up resistors, okay? So this is why things like um, uh, weight and non-maskable interrupt and stuff like that are always going to be high because there's a little resistor here that pulls this, we say pull up this signal here to five volts. And we don't just connect it to five volts because what can happen here is what about the data lines and all these other ones? I pull all of them up, right? You don't want to short them to five volts. The reason we pull them up to five volts is because if you zoom out a little bit on the schematic over here, there's going to be a connector that we're going to use when we're using the uh, mostly we're going to use this for the flash programmer um the the all the signals of the z80 are connected to this header over here so i can easily plug in a cable that can override those signals i can assert an nmi or a halt or or not halt because that's an output from the z80 right i can assert the weight signal and stuff like that this is how i'm going to operate bus request and i can also come in here and assert the reset signal okay but in order to do that sort of thing i need to make sure that i'm not going to conflict with the voltage that's uh, uh you know on that bus from this board here so we're going to use these 10K ohm relatively weak resistors to just pull them up to 5 volts, and they'll go to 5 volts as long as nothing else is there driving them down to ground, okay? And I'm going to pull up all the address lines, all the data lines, on all the inputs to the CPU, bus request, and stuff like that. And I'm going to pull up all the lines that are on the control bus because if I do a bus request, and I'm waiting for the bus act to come back. The Z80 disconnects itself from all the address lines, all the data lines, and all the the uh, read, write, MREC, and so on. I don't want these to just randomly go high and low. But when the Z80 disconnects, and the flash programmer has not yet noticed that the bus acknowledgement signal is coming back yet, what's the bus going to do? It's very important that these don't glitch and accidentally start to start going low and all of a sudden memory starts reacting and stuff like that. All right. So that's why we the main reason we need to pull up, we got to pull these up right here. Absolutely. We also want to pull up these interrupt lines because we don't want the Z80 thinking something's interrupting when it's not really interrupting. Okay. So there's a lot of pull-ups, and that's what these things are. All right. So where do we want to start? We want to start with what does it mean to reset this CPU, all right? So that is handled by the reset circuit right here, which is a little bit complicated. Let's walk through this. Fortunately, most of the rest of the system is actually simpler than this. <laughs> uh, before we look too closely at this, let's take a look at this one net right here. The reset SW uh, will also appear over here, okay? The reason I want to show you this is because I want you to know that there's a 10 kilo ohm pull-up resistor on the reset SW signal, okay? But it's over here. It's part of a resistor network. Uh, normally, I'd want to see the resistor drawn right in here so I can see what's going on. It's sort of otherwise hiding over there, so be careful about that, all right? So, news flash: there's a pull-up resistor on this net to 5 volts, okay? So, let's start at the beginning and walk through what happens. Day one, there's no power on the system. Five volts here is zero. Ground is zero. There's no charge in this capacitor. The button's not pressed. None of this is powered on. Nothing's happening. Okay? Power turns on. What happens? 
Well, this capacitor is sitting here. One of it, uh, one of its pins is connected to ground. The other one's connected to this. No current flows through this diode because it'll block the five volts. It can't go down this way. Okay, current can only flow up uh, this way, right? And with the direction of the arrow, right? So the pull-up resistor that's on reset SW off the screen right now is pulling up on this net. And through that resistor, this capacitor slowly charges. The time it takes to charge capacitor equals R times C. C is one micro times 10,000, which is uh, one millisecond or 0.1. Not, not a very long time, but an enormous amount of time with respect to how long the reset has to be asserted when the power goes on. Remember the rule for the Z80 is that the reset line on the Z80 over here, reset, which comes from right here, has to be low for at least three clock cycles, right? Three ten millionths of a second in order to reset the CPU. Well, that RC time constant should be more than enough to take care of the, of the job, okay? So let's see what happens. So the dial's not doing anything. This capacitor's slowly charging up. So this signal starts out at ground, and if you drew a plot, it would have a curved line like that, okay? Well, that's going into this Schmidt triggered NAND gate. And if you look up what a Schmidt triggered NAND gate does, it uh, this little symbol on here represents a hysteresis graph is what that is. You could Google it, read a Wikipedia page. I'm sure there's a nice page on Schmidt triggered gates. Uh, the short of it is this. This gate, unlike a regular gate, has a very wide range of voltages where it will not react to. And what that means is, in order for this signal to be perceived by the gate as having gone from low to high after the power goes on, right? Remember, it starts out, there's no voltage on the cap here. It takes time to charge it up, so it starts out with a zero. How long does it take for this to charge up to the point where this gate thinks it sees a one, okay? It takes a long time for a Schmidt trigger, okay? Because... The way a Schmidt trigger works is it says, if it is currently seeing a zero down here, it wants the voltage to go way up high, almost all the way to five volts, before it considers it uh, a change and transitions the, the, the gate here to react to it. And then once it's up at five volts, it says, it wants to wait until the signal gets all the way down, almost all the way to ground, before it transitions it back to zero again. Okay? So what that really means is, if this capacitor starts charging up slowly, relatively speaking, okay, and it kind of is going up and down, it's not charging perfectly, right? Maybe it's got some noise in here, and, and it will, because the five volt power won't be perfectly smooth and that's the problem right so the five volt power will be glitching up and down and all the gates are transitioning and stuff there'll be a little bit of noise on that and the last thing you want to do when you're having a nice small uh, slow smooth charging curve is to put little saw teeth in it like this okay and that's what will happen otherwise and if you put a regular gate here what will happen is as this thing charges up with these little saw teeth in here the output of this gate will go on off on off on off really fast and drive everything nuts downstream of this thing okay now, as uh, if you rummage through the manual, the Z80 actually has some hysteresis on its own reset input, and it even recommends that you can, if you want to, just put a capacitor and a resistor on the reset line and forego all this other malarkey over here, and the, re and the Z80 will be fine, okay? Well, that's great for the Z80, but it may not be fine for any other devices that might want to have uh, need to be reset as well and may be less tolerant of this glitching all over the place as this capacitor charges. Okay, so that's what this circuit over here is doing. The NAND gate here 
gets rid of the glitches that could be caused by the saw teeth. All right, that's what this does. But because I have the only gate I have that, that, that can do that, and I can put a Schmidt trigger in here, happens to also invert the signal. So when, when this uh, low reset here finally goes to high, this one starts out high and goes low. That's the exact opposite of what we want to send down to the Z80. Okay. Now there's also a problem uh, where we, uh, down the road, we want to allow different devices to reset the board, not just this one push button switch. So I put an open collector driver on here. Now what this is going to do is whenever the gate here is outputting a high signal, this transistor turns on and causes the real reset that's connected to everything in the system to be connected to ground, which is uh, the active state for that signal. All right, so starting at the beginning, quick recap, power's off, power turns on. Five volts is here, doesn't do anything. This thing's slowly charging up. This gate has been powered up. When this is low, because we just powered it on, the output here is high, which pulls this transistor uh, into the on state, which causes reset over here to be low. All right, so power goes on. We're asserting the reset signal, and it stays asserted until this capacitor charges up enough to tell this gate to change its mind, turn off the re this transistor, and disconnect reset from ground and let it float. Okay, this resistor here, if reset is not otherwise connected to ground, will pull it up to 5 volts. There's only a 1K, so that's pretty stiff. Right, uh, it'll hold it high, um, and it's got a 1K on there so that if there's a little bit of uh, crosstalk or some other nearby signal trying to radiate a little noise into here, this will pull up really hard on it so that it doesn't really cause any problems. It's the, the, the thought there, okay? Now, because this is open collector, that means other circuitry, if we have an add-on board like a flash programmer or something like that, can come in and pull this reset signal low on its own, right? Through, say, this connector over here, right? So the, this breakout connector in the schematic, literally the first thing we're going to use it for is to connect up the in-circuit flash programmer, which is going to assert the, uh, the reset signal in here somewhere, wherever that might be. It's right there, okay? to reset this board, and then it's going to do a bus request to ask the ZA to let the bus alone. And then when it comes back with a bus act, which is going to happen right away, the Z, uh, uh, rather the flash programmer will take over and assert the read and write and the MREC signals accordingly to interact with the flash memory chip over here. Okay, now that's why we need to have reset connected to an open collector driver so that other circuitry can also assert it without causing conflicts over here. Okay, so that's how the reset circuit's going to work when the power goes on. Okay, let's look and see what happens when the power shuts off. Then what happens? Well, when the power is turned off, most gates will be very upset. <laughs> Basically, it'll destroy their circuit if there is a high voltage on this signal right here when there's no power uh, uh, applied to the uh, NAND gate over here. Okay? Now, remember, once the reset is done, this capacitor will have charged up to 5 volts. If we take the power off of our system, this goes to zero almost immediately. And there is a resistor, remember, the 10K, that does pull this signal over to what would be 5 volts. It would now be pulling it to, towards ground, okay? And it would bleed off any charge on this capacitor, and the voltage would then come uh, slowly uh, be discharged back to ground. But if you remove the voltage on the 5-volt line, and it goes to zero right away, and this capacitor takes some time to go down, this gate here could get very upset, and you'd burn up the input transistors over here, because for a very brief moment, this capacitor will have a 5-volt uh, value here while there's no power on the gate, and that's not good. In comes this diode. 
whenever this capacitor or the reset SW line has a voltage on it that's higher than the voltage on the 5 volt power bus, which is what happens when you disconnect the power, any charge on this capacitor will flow through this diode and onto the 5 volt bus. By definition, if this thing holds this bus up, just say 4 volts, It'll go through this diode and onto the 5 volt bus, and while the other power supply is not connected, it'll push it up to 4 volts and keep it there. And that'll make this gate perfectly happy, because then this thing doesn't have a voltage on it that's too high. Now that's going to last almost zero time, because <laughs> this one little tiny capacitor would be powering the entire circuit. But the point is, this diode will bleed off any charge instantly and not allow the charge from this capacitor to burn up the gate's uh, input pins, okay? That's what this diode's doing. Now, how do you? what happens when you hit the button? Whenever I hit the button, uh, when the power's on and everything's running, if I want to reset it while it's going, this will be high at 5 volts, right? Because the capacitor will have been charged. If I hit this button here, it shorts out this capacitor, and it instantly drains the charge back to ground. Okay, bringing this back to ground, which is the exact same state you're in when the power is first applied. When you release this button, this capacitor starts to slowly charge back up again, and it does the same game over here. When the button's down, this goes low. The gate here sees it low, and it changes this high, turns on the transistor, transistor pulls reset low, just like we saw before, right? When you undo this thing, capacitor starts back up again, and it eventually uh, de-asserts all this stuff, okay? Now, uh, because the push button's a mechanical switch, uh, every time you press it and release it, what's really going to happen is it's going to, you know, uh, it'll connect these points together and disconnect them very quickly, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, okay? Very annoying, okay? Because you don't want this thing glitching up and down, up and down like nuts, right? Well, that's the exact same thing that happened, if you think about it, when this was being charged, the power was first applied. Again, our Schmidt trigger here is our friend. What happens when this uh, push button, as you release it, as it slowly physically moves away from the contact points, and it's going on, off, on, off, on, off, what's happening is this ch uh, capacitor starts charging, and then the switch bounces. We call that bounce. And it goes back to ground, and then it charges, goes back to ground, charges, goes back to ground. It could happen many, many, many times. Okay? While that's just jumping around a little bit, and it cannot fully charge up to the 5 volts over here, that's our Schmidt in action big time, okay? It sees it starting going up, and it says, oh, maybe I should change. No, not yet. And then this thing all of a sudden goes back to ground, and it's basically it's like a head fake, you know, in a basketball game. So uh, this starts charging, and it says, nope, goes charging, nope, charging, nope. And it's not until it gets fully charged that this gate says, all right, fine. Uh, I, he's taking it all the time he needs to actually fully charge, so this switch must be open and a little bit of time has passed, so the output then changes, okay? So this reset circuit will take care of a couple of things and make sure that this signal over here is always nice and square, as we say. Uh, whether the power goes on initially or you're pressing this button and there's switch bounce, this should be a fairly clean signal, right? When you push the button or the power goes on, the reset will be low. And when the reset period is done, as this thing charges up, it'll go from low cleanly up to high, very nice and square. Okay? Therefore, whether we're using that to reset the Z80, right? Which, like I said, if you read the manual, it says you can uh, kind of uh, put a sloppy analog signal of the capacitor that will slowly charge on here, and the Z80 will be happy, all right? But if you use that reset circuit for some external boards, let's say we make a plug-in board over here, and we want to be able to reset the circuitry in that other board, this reset may not work well if it glitches all the time over there. So this reset here, being connected to the output of this open collector driver with the Schmidt trigger on it, Nice, clean signal. All right? So that'll power it up and reset it, and everybody will be happy. So that's all there is for our reset circuit in this design. Thanks for watching. See you next time.